Hello, I welcome you to St. John's United Church for our online worship. This is the fourth Sunday in Lent. We continue the, the season of Lent until, of course, Good Friday and then Easter. And in this time, we prepare our hearts and minds for Christ's death and, of course, his resurrection, which is the hope of all of us as Christians. May this worship this morning help you in finding peace and joy in your lives. The Call to Worship Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exalt and be satisfied at her consoling breast. who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may wish to join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3 and 17 to 22. Give thanks to the Lord, because he is good. His love is eternal. Repeat these words in praise to the Lord, all you whom he has saved. He has rescued you from your enemies and has brought you back from foreign countries, from east and west, from north and south. Some were fools, suffering because of their sins and because of their evil. They couldn't stand the sight of food and were close to death. Then in their trouble they called to the Lord, and he saved them from their distress. He healed them with his command and saved them from the grave. They must thank the Lord for his constant love, for the wonderful things he did for them. They must thank him with sacrifices, and with songs of joy must tell all that he has done. Our first hymn this morning is, O God of Love, O King of Peace.
morning's scripture readings are brought to us by Alana Fernal. Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. The Israelites left Mount Hor by the road that leads to the Gulf of Aqaba in order to go around the territory of Edom. But on the way, the people lost their patience and spoke against God and Moses. They complained, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We can't stand any more of this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people, and many Israelites were bitten and died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Now pray to the Lord to take these snakes away. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told Moses to make a metal snake and put it on a pole, so that anyone who was bitten could look at it and be healed. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who had bitten would look at the bronze snake and be healed. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. In the past you were spiritually dead because of your disobedience and sins. At that time you followed the world's evil way. You obeyed the ruler of the spiritual powers in space, the spirit who now controls the people who disobey God. Actually, all of us were like them and lived according to our natural desires, doing whatever suited the wishes of our own bodies and minds. In our natural condition, we, like everyone else, were destined to suffer God's anger. But God's mercy is so abundant and his love for us is so great that while we were spiritually dead in our disobedience, he brought us to life with Christ. It is by God's grace that you have been saved. In our union with Christ Jesus, he raised us up with him to rule with him in the heavenly world. He did this to demonstrate for all time to come the extraordinary greatness of his grace in the love he showed us in Christ Jesus. For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift, so that no one can boast about it. God has made us what we are, and in our union with Christ Jesus, he has created us for a life of good deeds, which he has already prepared for us to do. The Holy Gospel of John, chapter 3, and verses 14 to 21. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its Savior. Those who believe in the Son are not judged, but those who do not believe have already been judged because they have not believed in God's only Son. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. Those who do evil things hate the light and will not come to the light, because they do not want their evil deeds to be shown up. But those who do what is true come to the light, in order that the light may show that what they did was in obedience to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for all of these hymns, we we put the lyrics up so that if you choose to, you may sing along with the hymn. And today's hymn now for the second hymn is Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
It has been just over one year since the World Health Organization declared a pandemic for the world. It was quite an event, wasn't it? Still ongoing. Quite a time and quite a year. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that in, in this sermon, in this message, even though I also want to get to the scriptures that we, we need to deal with as well. But I thought it was important that we be reminded, as if we could forget, I guess, but be reminded that it hasn't been easy. Be reminded of what happened at the beginning. Throughout this, I, I affirmed at the beginning, and I would still affirm now, that as a Christian, and, and I don't mean that as a judgment for anyone, I mean that as this is our goal. Our goal as Christians should, should be neither afraid of something like this, nor foolhardy about something like this. We shouldn't be foolhardy just thinking that we're, we're immune to all of this. I, I, I have to admit, I've been joking with some people because in case you didn't know this, those of you who are listening, I've had COVID. I had it back in the beginning of December. And we did not, we had it mild, our family, but it, uh, it still affected us. And uh, now I joke with people, I'll say, because the science isn't in yet on this, but from what we know, at least for a while, we probably can't get it again. And so I'll joke with people and say I'm immune. Well, I joked with someone who didn't know I had had it, and I said, oh, well, I'm immune to this. And they said, well, why is that? Because you're a minister? And uh, I said, no, of course not. I said, it's because I've already had it. Oh, oh, and then I had to explain, of course, and explain that I didn't have it that bad. But the point of that uh, was just to say that things aren't always good. Things aren't always good in our lives. Uh, we, we experience that. And yet I would still say, and, I, and for the most part, I don't think I was, not to be afraid of that. This is what I was saying at the beginning, is not to have afraid or be foolhardy. So as a Christian, we shouldn't be afraid of getting COVID. We're not immune to it because we're Christians. That was the real point of what I was saying there. We're not immune to any of these things. We shouldn't be foolhardy if the best advice of the time, and sometimes they don't get it right, but we take the best advice that's around and we listen to that advice and follow that. There's no reasons we shouldn't. By the same token, though, we should also not be afraid of that. There have been occasions where I've needed to go into the hospital, uh, not knowing whether the person had COVID or not, and this was before I had had it, and the reality is they needed pastoral care. That's what I'm called to do. And I have to make a conscious choice sometimes because at first I can even be, you know, have some of those, those thoughts and anxieties come up. Well, what happens if I get it? What happens if, if this isn't good for me? Well, I signed up for something else. I signed up to help people and to be there for people. And if I'm going to back down at the time that they need me most, well, probably not doing my job very well then, am I? And so I would go. And but I think this is for every Christian. We should neither be afraid of these things around us. We will get them at times. They will affect us. But we are to trust in God, to have faith in our God that he still cares for us, even through these things, and even if we get it. And on the other hand, we don't need to be foolhardy. We don't need to test God. That's where I think the real idea of Jesus being tested in the wilderness, you don't purposely throw yourself off somewhere just to say, God, save me. Not when it's much easier to do something else. You know, there's a, a joke I've used more than once. I, I, maybe I should tell this one. I love this joke. It's about a, a man who uh, is, is uh, in a flood. There's a flood coming, and all of them say it's going to be really bad. And so they, they bring the, the vehicles, the police cars, and then they're getting everyone out. They say, you need to leave. He says, no, no I'm, I'm staying here in my home. God will protect me through this. Well, the floods rise up and his house it gets the first floor and he goes up to the second floor. And a boat comes along and they're still looking for people and they see him in the window and they say, well, come on, get on the boat and, and we'll save you. And uh, he said, no, 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 that's all right. God will protect me through this. And he goes up, it, it comes even higher and he goes up to the roof of his, his house and a, and a helicopter comes along and looks down at him and says, come on, we'll, we'll save you. Just get on. And the the fellow says, no, 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 that's all right. God is going to save me through this. He'll protect me. And anyways, the helicopter goes off and the water goes higher and he drowns. And he goes to heaven. And when he gets to heaven, he's a little concerned. He says, you know, I had great faith, God, that you would save me. What happened? Why, why didn't you save me? And God says, 
what are you talking about? I sent you a boat, I sent you a helicopter, I sent you a car. You didn't listen to any of them. What can I do? The point of that joke and the reason I like it is that sometimes the very things around us are the means by which God uses his, his help for us. So that's why we are neither to be foolhardy. That's being foolhardy when we have this offer right there and we say, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. On the other hand, we're also not to be fearful. So what happens if our neighbor desperately needs our help and we're worried, so afraid of COVID that we won't even go near them, even in, I'm not talking about just for a, a regular visit, which we're asked not to do, we're asked to keep distance, but what happens if they were in need, if they fell on their sidewalk? Would we not go and pick them up? I hope we would. And if we're that afraid of those things, then we need to look again at our faith in God. So let's come to that scripture passage because I do think that relates to how we live our lives is that great passage in Ephesians is one of the passages we read this morning. And that passage uh, talks about faith, it talks about grace, it talks about works. That we are saved by grace through faith. That's what it says in Ephesians. We are saved by God's grace, how is that accomplished? Through faith. But this is not a work. And that's what we always need to remind ourselves of, that this isn't some ability we have. You know, how I said earlier about it, this idea that if we're immune, Christians are immune to something. Well, sometimes we can think very highly of ourselves, too highly of ourselves when we look at the rest of the world, but somehow we're better because we're Christians. This is simply not true. We have no reason to boast, and that's what Paul says. You are saved by grace so that no one may boast. No one. Because there's nothing to boast about. If, if we're going to boast, we boast in Christ who has saved us. We don't boast in ourselves. We've done nothing to deserve this as Christians. That's what we believe. We believe we are saved by grace, a gift. And that is the best way to see it because... What happens is we see faith even then as a work. We think, well, if they have faith, then that means that it's faith that saves us, right? No, the faith itself doesn't save you. I, I, I'm not sure how else to put that. Some people might be listening to this right now, but I don't think that's what I was taught. Oh, well, maybe they misunderstood. But faith itself doesn't save us. It's efficacious is the word that's used in the scriptures. There's an efficacy to faith. It, it has... Coming back to gift. Grace is a gift from God. What happens when you receive a present or a gift? Do you do anything? To, do you pay for anything for that gift? No. It's a gift. It's given to you. Well, how do you get it then? It's because someone else did, did the work to go out and buy it. They did the work if they wrapped it up to wrap it up, and then they handed it to you. But you do have to do one thing to get it, but it's not a work. You actually have to put out your hands to receive it. That's faith, putting out your hands to receive it. Faith is accepting God's gift, grace, accepting God's gift. That's why it's efficacious. If you didn't accept it, you can refuse it. Someone gives you a present, you can just, I don't want it. I want nothing to do with that gift. Take it away. So you have to receive it, but the receiving of it is not doing a work it's just, like the word says, receiving it. And that's so that no one may boast. Every single one of us as Christians have received a gift. We have accepted a gift. And that acceptance doesn't make us better than anyone else. And what we need to be telling the world is that everyone can receive this gift if they want. It's there for everyone. For God so loved the world, the whole world, it doesn't specify just a part of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. This gift is offered to every single person. It's offered to you if you're listening to this or watching this, and maybe you've already received it. Maybe you haven't, but it's there, and it's there to be had, and there's nothing for us as Christians if we have received it to say, oh, well, that makes me so much better than everyone else. Not at all. 
All it means is that we've received a great and wonderful gift. And in that, that is why faith, faith is trust in God. Trust that God has done this for us and received this. And how does that relate to what I talked about earlier with with COVID? Well, it relates because that same trust is what we need in every aspect of our lives to have with God. As a Christian, we are called to trust our Lord, to be faithful to him. Faithful is that trust, being trusting of him. Being trusting that he will look after us even if things seem to be, by appearances or by sight, seem to be going off the rails. Can we trust God? That doesn't mean that bad things won't happen. It doesn't mean we are immune, as I said earlier about myself, as I meant as a joke. I'm not immune because I'm a Christian. Not at all. But hopefully as a Christian, I can trust that God will see me through whatever circumstance I face, including, including the last and final event I will face, my own death. Do I trust God in every event, including perhaps the the worst of all, my death? Do I trust that he will see me through that and that I will see him on the other side? May all of us do that. May I do that. May you do that. The Lord be with you. We will now listen to the piece, Lamb of God, sung to us by Janice Eichner.
And here is the closing prayer. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. And now may you receive the blessing from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.